sing this church. I believe in God. Lord, it is our prayer right now, Father, that you awaken us, Lord God, that let your will be done in our lives, Lord, not ours, but yours, Lord, that the Holy Spirit fill us, empower our worship, empower our witness to the world, Lord God. Jesus, praise you, Lord. Yeah. 
come before you, Father God, asking, Lord God, that you fill us with your spirit, Lord. We encounter you face to face in this sanctuary, Lord God, that in the name of Jesus, Lord, whatever circumstances we are in, Lord, may you be above them all, Father God. No matter what circumstances, Lord God, you are sovereign. You are in control, Lord God. We are free to worship you in this place right now, Father God. Hallelujah. Continue to worship him, church. The rising sun that shines from the darkness comes alive. I hear your voice say, This is my awakening. Like the rising Lord, we ask you to awaken our spirit this morning as we come and worship, as we touch your heart this morning. Father, we pray that as we listen to your word, your Holy Spirit would speak to each one of us. Any distraction, any anxiety, worry, or fear that comes our way in the name of Jesus, we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to just remove it right now. So let us focus on you and receive from you this morning. As we give you back all the glory, honor, and praise. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, good morning po sa ating lahat. Good morning, church. Morning. All right. So today, uh, we are winding up our series on the Holy Spirit. May uh, natututo po ba tayo about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Okay. So this uh, morning, we're here. 
if you are here on Sunday, you will be Sunday, we are trying to in context of what we are doing Holy Spirit in our lives. So this morning, uh, we, will do, we will do something that probably we have not done for a long time, uh, tracing back our, our tradition from the original founders of this church. We rely so much on the Holy Spirit, just like the Bible, the stories in the Bible is or are. And so this morning, that's our focus, to try and reboot the power of God in our lives and see how the Lord can use each one of us for His glory. Right? Um, the word this morning. Uh, can we read together Acts 19, 1 to 7? While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. They were about 12 men in all. Father, we pray that we, re, we act all God and respond to your word this morning through your spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so this, as I said last Sunday, we, had the, we talked about the power of the spirit and previous to that, we talked about the role of the spirit that we need to keep in step with the Spirit. No? So, yun po yung pinag-usapan natin. We are talking about the third person in the Trinity because that is our legacy as believers after Jesus had gone up to the Father. Ngayon po, kay, bakit natin kailangan pag-usapan at pilit na ipilit? You know, if the Holy Spirit is working just like what we have read this morning, you will see the context of all of this has something to do with power. Okay, with, with power. Okay, so I'll go to that in a while. Let me go first to the background of this text that we have read na binasa natin. No? So this is in the book of Acts. We know the book of Acts uh, chronicles the, the movement after Jesus had left to go back to heaven. And the, this is now the start of the work of the Spirit. Actually, Mikino chronicle niya how the power of the Holy Spirit went into the lives of believers. I want to show you a map here uh, of, I picture on yung buong Google Maps para makita natin, you know. The story we read happened in Ephesus. Okay, in Ephesus. Ephesus is modern day Turkey, the city of Is Izmir, the city of Izmir today. Right? The apostles, sabi ng mga apostles there, they, came, they were the apostles of John the Baptist. Right? So that means the message came from Jerusalem all the way to Turkey. Okay? So that, it's about, sabi dyan, 1,100 miles. Uh, hindi ko alam mag-convert eh. Siguro in kilometers, that's a lot of, uh, sabi dyan, kung magda-drive ka, about one day. So that means if you com- convert that to walking time, matagal po yun. You know? Apparently a week or so. So it's a long journey of the message of, the, of, the, of uh, John the Baptist to go all the way there. So gusto ko lang makita niyo yung context. How the word moves, right? And this was be- before all the gadgets we have today, right? This was even before uh, the invention of cars and all. No? These are all mga naglalakad lang. So before it came the place Ephesus today. So it's quite, quite, a, quite far, right? Ganun kalayo yung pinanggalingan nung, sali, nung 
message is John the Baptist going all the way there. Why do we have to talk about that? Because sabi ng mga disciples na nakausap ni Paul doon, they said they were disciples of John the Baptist or they heard the message of John the Baptist. But Paul says, we are teaching Jesus Christ. And what was the message of John the Baptist? If you go to uh, the Gospel of Mark, ang sabi ni John the Baptist, uh, he was called to prepare the way of the Lord. He was not the Messiah. So he was uh, called to prepare the message to point people to Jesus. So if you read Mark chapter 1, uh, using the, the prophecy of Isaiah, sabi ni Isaiah, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. So and there we quote chapter 4. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and the people of Israel went out to him. You see, his message was so empowering that Sinabi, the whole went to, to John confessing their sins and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. And we know the, the Lord Jesus also underwent the same uh, experience. He went to be baptized in the Jordan River. So the message of John the Baptist was very clear. He was to point people to Jesus. But Remember here, Jesus had not yet arrived. So the message of John the Baptist is to convict people, start preparing people so that when Jesus arrives, they are just ready to receive Him. Yung po yung naging work ni John the Baptist. And he also ended his, his, uh, his main message was this. Sabi niya, after me comes the one more powerful than I. This is verse 7 of Mark chapter 1. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. And he said something very important. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, see si Apostle, so, so si John the Baptist already prepared the people by saying, whatever I do today, if I baptize you in the water, I'm just putting you in water. But that will not make you a superman or whatever. It is not, it's not enough for living. Yung, matu- yung gagawin ninyo is just a, a manifestation of your desire to change. But it will, not, it will not give you power. Because what I do is so small, I'm not even worthy to untie the sandals of Jesus. So, he was saying... Walang, wala halos epekto yung ginagawa ko. It is the work of the Spirit that will, that will matter. So this is the kind of baptism that the people that Paul met, na alam nila, sabi nila ng mga taong ito, nagbago na kami. Nagbago na kami because we were baptized in water. We follow the, the teachings of John the Baptist exactly. So the role is... John the Baptist is just to convict people. Na walang pinagkaiba yung, yung mga tao ba ang nag-uusap, tapos may nakausap ka na masamang tao, ang samang ugali, nakwento ka mo about the gospel, na convict at nagsisi. Marami pong tao nagsisisi. Di po ba? Pag na, nagkaroon ng kasalanan, na convict, nagsisi. Pero kapag nagsisi ka na ba, nagbago ka na ba, totoo bang nagbago ka na? Yun po ang tanong. That's the that's the message of this 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 uh, of the Holy Spirit essentially. Can we really change individually by ourselves? Bakit nagawa mo na dati, nagba, nag-confess ka na, nauulit mo pa rin? Bakit yung iniiwasan mo, nagagawa mo pa rin? Maraming bagay, sabi nga ni Michael V. May kanta siya, gusto ko bumaik. Pero hindi ko magawa. Lahat naman tayo, sino dito gusto maba- buma- bumait? Ah, yung iba, ayaw nyo. Sige. Gusto nyo bang bumait? Lahat tayo sung bumait, di ba? Pero, sabihin na natin, can we really do it by, our, by ourselves? Hindi, di ba? 
Hindi mo magagawa bumait sa sarili mo. This is what the message of John was. John was saying, if you are convicted by 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 by, te- by my teaching, babait ka. Then magpapabaptize ka. Own effort eh, legalistic. Pagka nababtize na ba ang tao, pagka tas ibabtize, mabait na? Mga isang linggo siguro. After that, nadapa lang, minura na yun. Manilagyan ng bato dyan. Diba? Tayo rin, diba? After church, paglabas natin ng church. Holy, holy tayo dito. Paglabas natin dyan. Iba na yung hangin, kaagad. O kahit na dito tayo sa loob ng church. Eh. Right? In, ibig sabihin, the effort of man will not always reach God. This is what Paul was trying to, to, to impart to the disciples of John. That you have received a baptism. Yes, incredible power, but all by the work of man. Right? Hindi po grace message. Eh. Right? Hindi po siya grace message. It is man's message to change. Pwede po tayo mag-try magbago, pero nauulit pa rin. Kapo, magkasama kami ni Pastor Boggs. We were in a we, we were in a in CCF attending a marriage uh, and there was one testimony and the man was testifying. He is a believer. So, sabi niya, nung ba- bata pa ako, nagkasala ako sa asawa ko. I was uh, Nagkaroon akong infidelity, tama, no, Pastor? Pinatawad na ako. Nagbalit na search. nag na ako ng Bible. After two, three months, nalungkot uli ako eh. Bumalik uli ako sa dati kong ginagawa. Okay. Proof! Ang tao, kayang magbago. Ang tanong, hanggang kailan mo kayang magbago? You can really sustain on your own to be a good person. Right? That is why Paul says, what you receive is a message to prepare you. But it's not the message. Right? So, you repent, but your repentance can only be completed by the grace of God. It cannot be by your own merits. Wala pong mangyayari kung pipitin natin maging mabait na tao lang. Hindi po enough yun. So, that's why Paul came and told and told the, the disciples of John. I explain niya. Siyempre, hindi na isinulat ni, ni the, the St. Luke who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, so hindi na nilagay lahat. Pero ito siguro yun yung alam nga namang pagkasabi ni Paul, automatic. No? So I think Paul, in a sanctified imagination, imaginein mo, di ba, may kausap ng tao, babaguhin niya yung buhay niya. Hindi naman isang ganun, magbabago yun, di ba? Matagal na explanation. Nagkwentuhan siguro si Paul, tsaka yung mga yun. So, yes, lahat ng ginagawa ninyo, pang feel good. Di ba, yung may nagawa ako mabuti ngayon, ang sarap, sarap ng pakiramdam. Ba? Obligation based. Nag-church ako. Alam nyo ba, in 52 Sundays of a year, wala akong na-miss. Pagdating ng January next year, tingnan mo, bawa kung di ka nag-miss na in service. Kung ang basis mo is scoring, ang sarap ng pakiramdam. Never ako nag-miss. Right? And then, uh, lahat ng mga kasalanan ko, kino-confess ko kay God every time. Ang sarap ng pakiramdam. It's what is known as feel good gospel. Feel good. Okay? Nagagawa ko yung obligasyon ko. Feel good yun. Yeah. And Paul is saying, that is a feel good gospel. You can, you can have it, but it has no power. It will not lead you to what God wants you to do. It may make you a good person on earth, but that will not come. Because we're not counting life on earth. We're counting the quality of that life according to what God wants. So remember last Sunday, if you were here, we're talking of the of the earth, may crash, may panta, may core. If you are feeling good, you are just talking about the external part of a person. External lang. Yung needs, yung gusto, yung 
yung mga pangangailangan sa pansarili, external. But we're, Paul says, we're talking about the center of a person. What is the center of a person? What is happening in your spirit? So Paul volunteered, tell them, you need the power of the spirit. You need the spirit to come into your life so that you can be called the disciple of Jesus Christ. So disciples din sila, pero hindi sila complete. We are many, many Christians today live like the apostles, uh, like John's disciples. Marami pong tao nagkiklaim na kristyano sila. Okay? Yun yung mga tao na pag tinitin mo ang buhay nila, if there is a scoreboard of life, these are, these are good Christians, quote-unquote. Very religious Christians doing the work of God. Meron pa nga nagiging mga leader pa, nagiging mga active participants at church, but they're all focused on the surface. surface. You appear good, okay? Because of the knowledge of the Scriptures. Before, before Paul met these disciples, in, in Acts 18, meron pong kwento doon, before 19, meron pong kwento doon isang apostle, na isang tao, na ang pangalan niya ay si Apollos. Okay? Sabi doon, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, by the way, Alexandria is in Egypt, he's a Jew, that means the message of John went also all the way to Egypt. Ganong alayo yung message ni John. But this man, sabi dito, in verse 24 18, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, spoke with great fervor, thought about Jesus, though he knew only about the baptism of John. You see, that's, that is most Christians today. Marami pong Kristiyano know about Jesus. No, in the mind. Nabasa si Jesus, na-experience yung mga ginagawa to glorify Jesus. But, sabi niya, he knew only the baptism of John. That means whatever he knew, was knowledge. It was not in the heart. It was not in the heart. Right? So, Paul wanted to change this. Paul wanted to change the re- that reality. Ibig sabihin, pwede po naman talaga, kaya nga po madaming religion eh. Napakadaming religion. Po, may religion ba kayong alam na ang gusto niya ay sumama ang tao? Lahat po ng religion gusto bumait ang tao, gumanda ang pag-iisip ng tao, gumanda ang buhay ng tao, lahat po yan. But these are all man's efforts. So, ibig sabihin, lahat, ikaw ang gagawa, ikaw ang magpapabait, ikaw magpapakabuti. You have to follow certain rules, certain tradition, certain obligation, at pag nagawa mo, you will become a good person. But that, that, is, not, that is not possible, and we know that. We who have believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ believe, know that whatever you do, you cannot be a good person from the eyes of God. We are not, we are not matching our scores based on our own efforts, based on what God wants to do sa buhay natin. And so when Paul told the disciples that ready na so that you will be able to work on what God is doing. Ang message ni John, na hindi na i-communicate ng malinaw sa mga taong ito. Sabi ni John, there is a Holy Spirit that will come. That verses that will come. Meron pang Holy Spirit. Kaya ang nangyari, lahat sila sabi niya, in John's baptism. So, ano yung nangyari? Sino yung sikat? kita nyo na, doon na nagpukita yung mali. What is wrong is that we now believe in the personality. Personality. Cult, no? Kaka-tay. Kaya, tingnan nyo yung mga madalahing religion. Meron silang leader. May cult. Sino yung superstar dun sa religion? Yun ang pinaniwalaan yung messenger. 
eh. Hindi naman yun ang doon natin sabi ng Bible Word of God. It is God, not the messenger. Okay? We should not focus on the messenger. See, these people became good people because of John, and so John became the center. Right? The answer, if I am asked, siguro magtanungin ako, bakit ganyan ang buhay mo? It's because of God. Not because, well, the, the, the Lord can use people, the Lord use pastors, right? Incidentally, uh, this week we celebrate the life of uh, Pastor Clem Guillermo, who is a very influential person. If you are uh, mga millennial, hindi siya kilala. Yung nakikinig sa DCAS, no, if it's, it's still time to visit him, his remains is in Sanctuarium. He has preached in this church many times. Uh, been a very good influence in my life, in my Christian walk. Kahit makinig ka lang nun sa, ano na nga yung sa gabi? Heartline. No? Pag may problema yung mga Kristiyano, tumatawag si Kuya Clemang tumasagot. Right? So, like, he was like a big influence in my Christian walk. But he is not God. He was just simply pointing people to God. And that is what God was supposed to do. Like all of us, is supposed to look at God, not even the pastors here. Not even the the denomination. Yung iba, hindi ako. Pinaanak ako ganito na. Hanggang mamatay ako ganito na. See, that mentality is legalistic. No difference from what John was preaching. Pag ganun na lang isip natin, then the work of God does not work in our lives. It is the work of man. You see, yung mga ganung rason, hindi ako lilipat ng church. Oh, dito ako dapat nakaupo palagi. Ito dapat ang ano, yung may structure tayo sa buhay. You know, that, that simply destroys the work of God in our lives. That's why, pag tingnan mo mga Kristiyano ngayon, madami pong Kristiyano, you know, you come to think of it, how do we change the world really? Because the disciples in the book of Acts, if you read it, they were changing the world. Yung palang yung world noon eh. But today, parang wala lang. Christianity is just one of the options. Option lang tayo eh. In the marketplace of ideas, we are just one option. The challenge is, tayo rin, natin option lang, option na lang maging Kristiyano. Pag ngayon, feel kong maging magbasa ng Bible, good. Pag feel kong mag-church, good. Pag feel kong mag-small group, good. Pag hindi ko feel, huwag na, ayaw mo na, wala namang, wala namang mawawala, di ba? Totoo naman, di ba, mga kapatid? Kung di ba kayo mag-church ngayon, bukas, butog na kayo? Hindi, di ba? Kakain pa rin kayo eh. Kung di ba kayo mag-church ngayon, makakatulog kayo mamayang gabi? Yes. It does, will not change. Right? Because if you're just going through life like that, then what we do here is just like what others are doing. Diba? Daming simbahan eh. May iba nga, ah, sa bahay na lang. Okay naman. Meron naman TV. Mapapanood mo naman yan. In fact, naka-YouTube naman tayo. Pag hindi nyo naintindihan yung message, may hanggang ano mo rin mo ulit sa YouTube. Ah, parang ganun. People have options to me options. But the option, the best option avail, available to man, hardly people avail. Kahit halos, well, we have no, we have no difference from what the happening is outside. And I'm not proud to say that. That's the reality. Yung pang katotohanan, mga kapatid, many Christians are like that today. No power in what we do. We are only Christians by affiliation. Siguro, Christian yung parents ko eh, di doon na rin kami mag-church. We have all made it like a structure. Wala yung gusto ng work ng God. Not so much different today. Focus on the messenger, not on the sender. And so Paul said something. Sabi ni Paul, you know, mga kapatid na mga disipulo ni Juan, you did, 
you did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm going, I'm treading into a Pastor Bruce, Pastor Agu can come out. Very controversial. Meron pang cessation theory. Wala na yan, hindi na yan uso, hindi na yan, tapos na yan. We're not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about theological differences. Kaya iba-iba yung branches ng Christianity, di ba? Merong, nasa air, merong mga nasa army. Alam niyo, army, ito yung mga missionary. Yung nasa air force, yung mga Pentecostal air force, sa kataas ng kamay palagi. Air force. Bakit nakahiwala-hiwala? It's because of this. They said what Paul did and what happened in the book Acts, tapos na yan. So lahat ngayon daw tayo, puro utak, matatakino tayo eh. We just think, ah, hindi logical. It's not work of God. Do you, do you really believe that the, that the work of God ended after the apostolic age? Lahat na nandiyan na, nasa Bible, sahay mo nalang magiging maayos ang buhay mo. That means that the Bible cannot apply today? What the power was available then, the Bible cannot contradict itself. It says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever Jesus was doing then, that was passed on to the disciples, we can do today. So, kaya sabi ni Paul, there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why your ministry has no power, is because you did not get baptized by the Holy Spirit. Right? If you go back to the Old Testament, lahat ng mga prophets sa Old Testament, they were able to do incredible things at sinabi doon, in the power of the Spirit. Kung wala yung Holy Spirit, they were not able to do it. No? Madami yun eh. Sinabi ko na lang doon. If you not believe me, go back and read all the book. In the book of Judges alone, you will see all the incredible things done by the, by the judges. No? Si Samson, di ba? Bulag na. Ba? May power malakas. Nag-pray. Power, galing, sabi, in the power of the Spirit. Almost all of them were able to do great things in the power of the Spirit. Tapos sabi ng mga Old Testament yan eh. Okay. Pag-upo tayo sa New Testament. Sabi sa New Testament, how did Jesus do His ministry? Malinaw. In Luke chapter 4 verse 1, it says, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay, second point there in Luke chapter 4. Again, he was led by the Spirit. And was doing miracles empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so filled, led, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Ngayon, pag alam sa sabi ngayon, pag mga kisano ngayon sabi na, trabaho yan ng pastor. Hindi yan trabaho ng ordinary believer, pabayaan mo na yan sa kanila. Sila na lang yung ma-feel, ma-lead, ma-empower. Hindi kami dyan kasali. Pero sabi ni, sabi ng New Testament, you continue, the Holy Spirit also equip the next generation. Who were the next generation after Jesus? The apostles and the believers of the early church. And nung sila na, nung time nila, this was the explosion of the work of the Holy Spirit. No? Nag-speak in tongues, nag-prophesy, nag-teach, may katakalungan, kaalaman. Right? O, hindi na natin mag-usapan yan ngayon. Hindi, magkakahati-hati lang ang kapatilan dyan. Talaga bang hindi na nag-speak in tongues? Ha? Meron ako na ala doon, nag-speak in tongues, nag-pray. Kasi yung prayer niya, ito na ba Lord ang mabiging asawa ko? Siya na ba? Siya na ba? Siya na ba? Siya na ba? Yun ang sinasabi Diba? Hindi, hindi yun ang point eh. No? Hindi yun ang point eh. People miss the point. We all look at the acts outside. Again, it's the shell. We're not talking about this. We're talking about the internal person. What will the baptism of the Spirit do to you? What, what, what will it do to you? Ano nagagawa nun? And Paul simply, I mean, I'm trying to do all of this so that you understand why Paul has to do a baptism of the Holy Spirit to the disciples of John. Bakit kailangan pa ng baptism ng Holy Spirit? The main point is the Holy Spirit is the power to accomplish God's work. 
the Holy Spirit is the power to accomplish God's work. Ngayon, ang ganda yung quote ni John Piper. Basahin nga natin yung quote, A Christian without power is a Christian who needs a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Are you convinced? Pakita ko po kayo ng practical na application. Ha? Hiniram ko tong power bank ng asawa ko. Alright. Lahat tayo may cellphone, di ba? Siguro dito walang cellphone. Yung cellphone ninyo, hanggang kailan may power yan? Meron bang cellphone na pag hindi mo chinarge, buhay hanggang bukas? Wala. Kaya nga nauso tong power bank, di ba? Para kahit saan, nakakonek sa power. Now, that's about only about the power, but most of us want to buy the most modern, pinakabagong cellphone because what can tell you? The more expensivities, the more things you can do with it. No? Alam nyo ba yung, di ba last time, pinakita ko sa yung cellphone na kinakausap ka? Tatangin mo, sasasagot siya. Ilang taon na ako, sasagot pa. Di ba? Sinong asawa ko? Sasagutin. Diba? Ba, galing. Diba? Ang dami na gagawa ng cellphone natin ngayon. Right? Tapos ngayon, may bagong labas kahapon. Yung bayo na sa bahay namin. Pinagyayabang niya yung bago niyang cellphone sa akin. Ang oh, dami na gagawa nito. Ganyan, ganyan. Sabi ko, wala namang charge. Pag walang power yan, useless. Right? If you have the best gadget, but it has no power, it's useless. It's useless. Kahit yung pa yung pinamagandang available, but no power, it's useless. My friends, that's the same with our Christianity today. Sabi dun si Apollos, was learned in the scriptures. Alam yung Bible. Alam niya, matalino siya. He knew what is needed. He knew Jesus in the mind. Full of power, full, full of knowledge, packed, but no power. No power. Right? Maraming tao, ganun, ang daming alam about God. Right? But no power. No power. Pag walang power, wala lang. Kaalaman lang yun. But we talked about it. Wisdom and knowledge. Many people have knowledge, no wisdom to use it. So today, mga kapatid, if your life is like that, you know a lot about God. I know many people have been Christians for 30 years, 40 years, going in and out of church. Life has no power. Walang power ang buhay. What do I mean when I say power? You are accomplishing God's work. That is the measure of the power of God in your life. Kapag wala pong accomplish for God sa buhay natin, that means there's no power. Wala pong power ang buhay natin. Right? We can be good Christians, but there's no power in our lives. Yun yung point ni Apostle Paul. That's why he said, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will give you power. Eh, yung mga pilosopo ang sabi nila nung tinanggap namin si Jesus. Christian na kami, di ba? Sabi, accept the Lord Jesus, you and your household will be saved. So that's salvation. Jesus changed our lives. So the repentance from John and then salvation in the, by accepting the Lord Jesus. Maraming tao, saved na ako, okay na yun, tama na. Wala na ako yung magagawin, tama na yung saved na. So they do not avail of the power available. You know, most all believers in Jesus Christ are actually are like the best machine available. Kaya lang, kung walang kuryente, wala. Para lang tayo nasa garahe palagi. You can have the best Porsche, but if there's no power, wala. Para tayong mga kotse sa showroom, pinakamahal na kotse sa showroom, naka Play, pero hindi umaandar. Right? So Paul was telling the disciples of John, you need the baptism of the Spirit so you can experience 
the life of the Spirit. Experience. Ano ba yung life of the Spirit? I don't know about you, mga kapatid. I know how long have you become a Christian? How long have you been attending church? But have you experienced the life of the Spirit? Hindi po to seminar, hindi life in the Spirit seminar na pagkatapos nun, taas-taas ka na ng kamay. Oh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the work of God in your life. What has God done in your lives? It's that is experiencing the power of the Spirit. No? Magkaroon ka ng, magkaroon ng power, boldness, confidence. Ba kaya, kaya di ba last week sabi ko, nung nakita si Paul, si Peter, at saka si John, nung mga tao, sabi nila, itong mga tao na ito nagpipreach about the gospel, these people are unschooled people, hindi nakapag-aral yan ha. Bakit ang gagaling mag-preach? Bakit ang daming alam about God? That is what power is all about, mga kapatid. People are changed. There's an experience. Maraming tao, yes, ako nag-accept na ako kay Jesus, but you alone can answer that. Sabi natin last Sunday, the Spirit Himself testifies with my Spirit. That's why I cannot, I cannot pinpoint who has the Spirit. It's you who knows. Sarili po natin ang magsasabi that the Spirit of God lives in us. You know it by yourself. Do I have power in my life? Ikaw ang makakasagot nun, kapatid. Wala po kaming maisasagot doon. Ikaw ang makakaalam kung ang Espiritu ay, ng Diyos ay nasa iyo. Kasi yan po ay consequence ng faith. Okay. Sabi doon sa Romans 8, 9, 11, read last week, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. If the Spirit of Jesus Christ is not in you, you do not belong to Jesus Christ. You may belong to the Alliance Church, but you are not with Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, people in heaven do not ask you sa ang church ka umaten. They ask you, do you have the Spirit of Christ in you? That's the bottom line here, mga kapatid. Right? If Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. So, baliwala na yung katawan, hindi na iniisip. Ang iniisip ay yung Spirit ni God. If the Spirit of God is in you, He will give life to what you do. You will experience God daily. Kaya, pag titignan natin, sarili natin, ito yung basic test. Let's test ourselves. Simple test lang. Kaya nga, pinreach to ni Pastor Agu four weeks ago, we want to bring it back as we close this message. Sabi sa Galatians 5.22, May proof yun eh. Nakikita. You check ourselves individually. Is the Spirit of God in me? Let me check with the checklist. The checklist is fruit. Bunga. Okay? Kaya ang galing ng analogy ng Bible palagi. Using natural. No? Kung ito bang puno na to, itanim ko sa bahay namin, mamumunga ba ng mangga to? Hindi naman to mangga. Hindi to mamumunga ng mangga. di ba? Very clearly, the Word of God says, may fruit. If the Spirit is in you, transplanted in each one of us, then it comes out. What is it that you need to check? Ang dali po check no? Binigay na ng Bible ang gagawin natin. Sabi mo sa sarili mo, yes, I believe Jesus is in my heart. Then let's check your experience. Did you experience the power of the Spirit in your life? First check. Do I have love? Very basic. Do I have love? Do I love God? Do I love my neighbors? Do I love my family? Pangalawa. Do I have joy? Pag joy na, medyo mahirap na. Joy is much, much higher than happiness. You see, the Holy Spirit is not concerned about happiness. It says joy. Bakit kaya joy? Because joy does change with the circumstance. Happiness is circumstantial. Happy ako kung may pagkain. Ang joy, kahit walang pagkain, happy pa rin. That is joy. Right? Will you be joyful if you have nothing to eat? You can do that in the power of the Spirit. Right? The Apostle Paul chronicles that. 
Many people can give you testimony that they can have joy even if they don't have the best cell phone. That they can have joy even in the difficult circumstance. That is joy. You cannot take it away because of circumstance. Right? Maraming testimony dun yun. Yung asawa, nag-aaway, araw-araw, galit yung asawa niya. Pero she decided with the Spirit is in her that she will have joy. It's a decision of the Spirit. Third check, may peace ka ba? Ha? Daming peace dyan. Hindi ako makatulog. Wala akong peace. Data mula nung nagsabi, may nagpa-counsel sa akin dati. Hindi ako makatulog, pastor. Wala akong peace. Alam mong problema mo? Wala yung Holy Spirit sa buhay mo. Kaya wala kang peace. Hindi na ako tinawagan mula nun. Wala kang Holy Spirit sa buhay mo. Kasi sabi, ang fruit spirit ay peace. Eh bakit, bakit ganun? Ako Christian ako, attend ako na ng church, wala pa rin akong peace. Kasi yung maabot lang dito eh, hindi bumaba sa puso eh. We will not have peace unless the spirit goes inside. Wala po nga. Oh, ito, pinakamatindi. Patience. Sa old English use the word forbearance. Mahirap intindihin, patience na lang. Wala akong patience. Eh. Tagal naman. Mami, nagprakita niyo yung picture na, Lord, give me patience. Now. Ngayon na. Ang galing, ang galing ni God, no? Ang galing mag-check, no? May andito ba yung Holy Spirit sa akin? Ay, tuloy yung check. Kindness. Kindness. Are we kind because the Holy Spirit teaches us to be kind? Or are we kind because we get something out of it? Diba? Bigyan mo yan kasi pagdating ng panong, bibigyan ka rin yan. Uh, yan yung kindness ni, ng, up, ng repentance ni John. See, you see it very clearly. This all going out. Goodness. No? Yung good na yun, ginagamit na lang na expression, my goodness. Goodness here is really good. No? It's an outcome of the Spirit coming from the heart of persons. Faithfulness. Gusto ko yung word na faithfulness. It's not only about talking about Faithfulness. Bakit ako magiging faithful kay God? Because the Spirit lives in me. I'm faithful all the time. Bakit ako may asawa ko? I'm faithful to my wife because the Spirit is in me and allows me to become faithful. I'm not faithful because I can natitiis ko. Nagiging mabait ako. Hindi po. No? Automatic be faithful because of the Spirit. And then you're gentle. Why are you Gentle. Because of the Spirit. And most of all, your self-control. Mga kapatid, this is a very easy checklist. You can check it yourselves. Check. If you confirm with yourself that the Spirit of God lives in you, do you have this? I, you alone can answer that. I cannot answer for you. It says here, fruit. Hindi po fruits. Fruit. Hindi po wrong grammar yan. Tama po. Fruit, because it's a package, sabay-sabay. It comes to you at the same time when the Spirit lives in you. He said, Pastor, mali lang translation yan, may S yan. Po, tama po. Fruit, isang bukus magkakasama. The Spirit of God, when He lives in you, you have received all of this. Siguro yung iba, magnitude, hindi pa, lumalak, hindi pa kikip, lumalago. But you already have this. That's the change that we're talking about here. Yun yung pagbabago na ginagawa ng Spiritu Santo sa buhay natin. And lahat yan, walang nakalagay dyan na knowledge, di ba? Because it's all against logic. Pag ginamitan mo ng utak yan, it will not work. That's why the Holy Spirit works counterintuitively, not using the knowledge of man. Tataka tayo, bakit bumait yan? Dati ang sama yan. Logic ang ginagamit natin eh. Holy Spirit works differently. Right? Paano ka nagkaroon ng ganyang pera? Hindi ka naman matalino ah. 
logic, spirit works differently. This is what we are saying here, mga kapatid. So this morning, as I end, I'd like to challenge you. You can, ask, you can assess your life right now. We don't have to ask you to go home and say, and say, may Holy Spirit ba sa buhay ko? Yung Holy Spirit ba nag-work sa buhay ko? This morning, we'll, we'll do something like what Paul did. Anong ginawa ni Paul? He laid his hands on the people to release the power of the Spirit. There's no power in us. When the pastors are here, we can pray for you. But there's no power in us. It is you who decide that you want to be connected to the power of God. If your life does not reflect its fruit, you know what I'm talking about. Power of the Spirit. Right? So, magdadala ka, hindi na kailangan magdala ng power bank because the Holy Spirit is only the only power available. Hindi na de-drain unless you decide to drain it. The Spirit, when you have it in your heart, it's always there. It will change your life. So kapatid, ngayon, I'd like us to bow our heads and think about our lives right now. You have the checklist with you. Think about your life right now. Let's assess ourselves very clearly. Am I a John follower or a Jesus follower? A John follower or Jesus follower? We're talking about the difference. What kind of life do I have today? Is there power in my life? Is that power manifested in the kind of love I, I give? Is that power manifested in the joy that I have in my heart? At the end of the day, that is the measurement of God. God wants to see His people receive this gift of the fruit of the Spirit. We don't want to be limited in what God is doing sa buhay natin. In some of us, it will take a little time. We kind of sabay-sabay nakikita. But still, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. I want to give you this time to think about your life. Mga kapatid, the Spirit is speaking to each one of us. We want to pray that the Spirit empower our lives. We would like to, if you would like to be prayed for na yung umaga, invite you to come forward here. And don't be conscious. It's not between us. It's between you and God. You want power in your lives right now? This is the, a great time to receive like to give this invitation? Is there anyone here? You want the power of the Spirit in your life? You can come forward here and our pastors will pray for you. Thank you, Paul. Anyone here? You can, you can come forward and say, Holy Spirit, I need your power in my life. Is there anyone here? Anyone else? and pray for you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.
afresh on me. Fill me with your power. Pastors are going to be finished praying. Is there anyone else? I'd like to give this invitation to you so that there will be power in our lives. Everybody to start to sing this song. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Fill me with your power. Satisfy my need. strength to make me grow. Come Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. I'd like to request everyone to please raise your hands right now. Those of you who did not come forward would like to release to you the Spirit. Father, I pray for everyone here raising their hands. Father, we'd like to them for them, for each one of them to receive the power of the Spirit right now. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, just like Paul, that my brothers and sisters will be activated in their faith, that they will receive your Spirit, and that they will allow the Spirit to work in their lives so that they can move for your glory. So from today on, Father, that the fruit of the Spirit will manifest in their lives, and not, will, will, they will not remain the same as they enter this sanctuary, they will be changed for the greater glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask and pray all of this and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Um, today, before we give our offerings and tithes, may I read to you Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken, together and running over, will be poured into your lap for the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let us pray as I invite the ushers. Father Almighty, you have given us many blessings. Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving with our hearts. Look heavenward. Lord, you have given us a home to take shelter in, clothes to make feel warm, food to nourish our body. 
and water to keep us from being thirsty. Lord, you give, have given us eyes to see your beautiful creations, a nose to smell the scent of the flowers, ears to hear the birds humming so sweetly in the morning. Lord, you have given us hands to touch the lives of many. Lord, for all these gifts you have showered upon us, we offer to you these simple presents. May they put to God to good use of the community. Lord, you have showed us what it means to be generous, to be generous and want to pay it forward to your church. Lord, grant the church the same generosity that you have taught us and that we may understand what means to be your child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We all need time to be away from our busy schedule and have special moments with our spouse. We want to learn from other married couples who's already been there. One of the learning experiences you can have is meeting other couples working to improve their marriage. Couples in the same season, some in earlier or later season. It's encouraging and refreshing. Our marriage may not be perfect, but it's okay. Coming to Rated R2 means there is a big possibility that our marriage can be much greater. The ultimate reason is because I love and care for my partner. I want to get closer to her and have a better marriage. Because your strong relationship with each other is the best thing you can do for us as your children. Yes, it makes sense. What are you waiting for? Rated R2. Refresh, recharge, emerge at Punta de Fabian, Ras Rizal, via 5,000 pesos per month. That's an invitation. Sino po ang uh, married couple dito? O kaya nawala yung asawa dito, basta married. Okay? Uh, announcement po, hindi po ito para sa mga young couples lang o yung mga bagong kasal lang. This is for all couples. Okay? This is an invitation for everyone. Because it's either, we can always learn something kahit na medyo matagal na tayo sa marriage life natin. Ano? There's some things na kailangan pa o gusto pa natin i-improve. And at the same time also, if we will be there, kung may experience tayo with this, we can also be a blessing to those who will be attending there. So it's either we'll get blessed and be a blessing to others. So it's an invitation for everyone. And sabi doon, it's the last day of registration today. Uh, please confirm your attendance because uh, the place needs to be reserved. Okay, so uh, sana ngayong araw na to, makapag-isip na ka kung nag-iisip pa kayo, kung mag-a-attend ba, hindi. Sana po makapag-decide na to because we need to uh, register and reserve that place really for this purpose. Okay, so invitation for couples only. Ito po sa atin. Okay, uh, another thing also is I would like to invite you also for uh, our uh, prayer, prayer connect every Thursday. Uh, please do come here. We'll be gathering in the chapel. Uh, 6 to 7 p.m. lang po, one hour of prayer. Uh, and also, if you desire to really have a care group or small group to discuss things, especially mga sermons na uh, we've been hearing here every Sunday, so you can have the opportunity to ask questions, to hear your concerns and that. Uh, in, in your care group. So if you desire, meron po tayong mga uh, uh, envelopes there. Although wala yung care group niya, pwede yung isulat doon, I want to be, uh, I want to have a care group. Then, then give it to any of the people sa likod 
okay? So give it to the foyer, uh, drop it to the foyer kung may box doon, and we would like to attend to your concern of having a care group. Okay, so the Lord, uh, we thank the Lord for blessing us and meeting us fresh in you this morning. Let's all stand as we come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for impressing to us that uh, you desire us, Father God, to really experience you more in our lives. Uh, you, O Lord, being our Father, uh, Lord, you desire a relationship in Tiri with us. That's why you sent the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, and also the Holy Spirit that continues to dwell, to even uh, reside in us, Father God, and with us. So, Lord, you desire this kind of relationship with you because there's so much to experience in you, Father God. It's not only justification of our sins, but it's really more of sanctification of our lives, becoming more and more like Jesus until we reach such a point where we'll be joining with you in your glory, Father God. So, thank you for that promise, Lord. And Lord, uh, this is the last day of our series of sermons on uh, the Holy Spirit. But Lord, help us that it will not remain only in our minds, Father God, that we don't only understand these things. That may it be our practice, Father God, that we practice our lifestyle. It will be our discipline, Father God, that every day that we wake up, we would call on you and we would express our dependence on you on the Holy Spirit, Father God. And help us, Lord, that every time we have a struggle or we have a, a problem, help us, Lord, that it will be our discipline, our desire really to commune with you and ask the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we desire these things that it will not reign only for us to know, but to live with these truths, Father God. Because we believe the fullness of life that you said in your word, that you came for us, Father, to experience the abundant life. This is part of it. This is really it, Father God. Experiencing the goodness and the love of you, Father God, through the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, Lord, as we face this another week, Lord, may this be the start of us, Father God, of our lives walking and enjoying the Spirit in us, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for that promise. Thank you for that assurance. And thank you for the testimonies that we are going to hear, Father, of experiencing how we experience you in our lives. To you be all the glory and honor. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face to you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. We lift you higher.